All right, so uh, let's get right into it. Now, uh, the first thing we need to do here is to check for your system requirements. And if you are on Discord, all you have to do is just click on Start here, and you'll be able to see all the kind of uh, system requirements, uh, some of the things that um, I recommend that your computer supports. We're going to check that in a minute. I'm going to show you where to go to check all that information in a minute. But I just want to show you that Within Discord, we will have the link to all the things that to all the things that we are going to be downloading in a minute, uh, and a few other things. Right, we got different resources. So again, if you're not on Discord, please consider uh, you know joining the Discord. But if you're watching this video from let's say YouTube, uh, this uh, the links to the downloads. It's also going to be into the uh, uh, the description, right? The YouTube description uh, section. So, so first thing, like I said, uh, what we're going to do here is to check for the system requirements on my particular machine, right? I can click on this, uh, I can right click on this Windows logo, like, like right click on the Windows logo, and then go to your system, okay? Uh, once you click on system, it's going to open up this about this PC or about your computer, kind of your device specifications. And here, uh, we want to check for uh, at least three things, right? The first thing we need to check is your RAM. Now, as you can see, based on my description here, I said, I highly recommend, I highly recommend that your computer supports at least eight gigabytes of RAM. If you have 16, like me, that's fantastic, but eight is highly recommended. It's the minimum, right? Another thing we need to make sure that you have is the CPU. Now, CPU um, has to be two gigahertz. If you 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 know you have anything better than that, then what I have here it's fantastic. Uh, it doesn't have to be an i7; it can be an i5, but it has to be two gigahertz or better. Um, and that's because we're going to be you know running multiple uh, systems at the same time, and you want to make sure that your computer can support that. Another thing that we need to check here is your system type. You need to make sure that your system type is a 64-bit operating system. Uh, again, that's because most of the programs, if not all of the programs that we're going to be downloading are all 64 uh, type of uh, programs. One last thing we need to check is to check if your system supports virtualization. And go back to your uh, Windows logo, right-click on it again, and then open up your task manager. Some people are familiar with task manager. So open up your task manager. And once you're here, I want you to click on the performance tab and make sure that CPU is selected. And right here, we will check to kind of just verify, right? Verify, uh, make sure that your virtualization is enabled. If this is turned off, you're gonna have to turn it back on and the way you go by doing that is go to your uh, UEFI, some people call it UEFI or UEFI, or your BIOS, you know, your computer BIOS, uh, to turn this on. Obviously, you know, to do that, you will have to shut down your machine, or press F12, it depends on what your system is, and then you go from there. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, different YouTube videos or, uh, you know, different articles or blog posts that talks about that stuff. And if you if you want me to help you with that, please do join Discord and let me know. And I will definitely help you to turn this virtualization feature on because you need it before we can really do anything. Now, that's fantastic. Uh, what if you are on the Mac? Well, if you are on the a Mac computer, you will have to click on your uh, uh, Mac logo. <laughs> Uh, your Mac logo, it's going to probably be some somewhere here, somewhere like your uh, top left uh, corner. And once you click on your Mac logo, you will see an option that says about this Mac. Right. Once you open up this, you know, about this Mac, uh, it's going to give you all the specifications uh, that we needed. All right. It's going to you know, let you verify those things. You'll be able to see your processor, your memory, which is really what's important. Uh, when it comes to you know virtualization, now as far as your um, uh, virtualizations, you will have to you know, double check and make sure that's turned on as well. All right, so enough of that. 
Now that we have you know the specifications out of the way, let's get right into the meat of the conversations. Let's get into the fun stuff. So first thing that we need to do here is to make sure that we are downloading everything. So it's, let me just open all these links that I have here, right? Then we're gonna just gonna go over one by one. We wanna make sure we're downloading everything. So the, the first thing we need to download is VirtualBox. So like I said, VirtualBox, it's the hypervisor, it's the program that we will use uh, that's gonna allow us to kind of uh, virtualize our home lab, virtualize the entire environment of our, of our home lab. So click on the link, it's gonna bring you here. Of course, you can Google this as well. Just go to Google and Google for VirtualBox and it's gonna take you here. Just make sure you click on that download section and then, you know, uh, grab one of these packages here. So if you are on the Windows machine, click on this Windows uh, VirtualBox. If you're on the Mac, obviously click on OS, OS X and Linux distros, they got, you know, they got you covered as well. So VirtualBox is downloaded. A few other things that we will need to download, it's Kali Linux. That's another thing we're gonna have to download. Unfortunately, I think as of two days ago, they changed their website and you will have to, you know, you have to use this new looking website. So once you get to the Kali Linux uh, website, again, you can Google this as well. Just click on the virtual machines and it's gonna scroll down and take you to the virtual machine sections. Make sure that 64-bit is selected and downloaded this uh, VirtualBox version. So when you click here, it's gonna start downloading. Um, one issue that I've seen, and I think this it's because of the changes that they made it to the website, uh, it's that when you download it from here, it takes forever. <laughs> Depends on how fast your internet is, it might take uh, a while. Uh, but again, if it's not downloading or you're having some issues, again, I believe it's because of the changes of the website. Maybe you know they've changed where they normally stored this download. Uh, but you can you know reach out to Discord and and I can provide you with you know with the uh, with the file. Uh, or we can find different sections online that provide the same thing. All right, and that's Kali Linux, another system we're gonna use. Another one we're gonna we're going to use is Metasploitable, and this specifically is the second version, so Metasploitable two. I know there's a newer version out there, but we just needed the the second one. This is a vulnerable machine that we're gonna do a lot of cool stuff with. So when you go to the link that I provided, it's gonna download it that automatically. But if it didn't, for some reason, just click on the download uh, link and it's gonna start downloading this for you. Another thing we're gonna download, it's your Windows 10. We need a client machine. So Windows 10, obviously, will be our client machine. So following the link, you will see us, uh, one of the tabs here says VirtualBox. I want you to click on that and it's gonna you know, go ahead and download it out for you. One last thing we need to download, it's Server 2019, like your Server 2019. Uh, and here, we are not downloading OVA file. As you can see with the Kali Linux, we're downloading OVA files. Uh, same thing with the Windows 10. But with our Windows Server 2019, we are downloading this ISO, ISO file. Right. And this is a pretty cool because with the OVA file, I can just import that into VirtualBox and I will be showing you that in a minute. And then, you know, that's it. Off I go. Right. After, you know, uh, importing those into VirtualBox. But with, with the ISO file, I'll be able to install this Windows Server 2019 from scratch. And I think that's important for some people to know. So therefore, I will be showing you that as well, how you go in and install a server from scratch. Uh, it's going to be fun. So click on ISO, click on next, and they're gonna ask you to you know, put in your descriptions, put in your name, first, last name. You can, um, you know, this doesn't have to be, you know, all, all true, right? If you, uh, you, you don't wanna do that. They just wanna have, you know, some things on, on file. So obviously make sure you put all this information in and then click continue. The next page, they're gonna ask you to provide your, uh, to select your language. Uh, so if you speak, I mean, I will select English, 
but if you speak any of the other languages please do select that as well and then click on download literally put in your information click on continue select the language and then click on download and then it's going to appear here it's going to start to download here as well <clears throat> now i'm not doing that because i've already have all these downloaded just so i can you know move through this a little bit fast all right, so that's how you go by downloading everything we need to download. So now let's go ahead and start installing stuff. So the first thing we're gonna to have to install, obviously, is going to be our VirtualBox, right? Our hypervisor. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on this uh, hypervisor program. If you don't see it here, it's probably in your download folder. So you will wanna to go to your download folder by going to your Fire Explorer, or your Fire Explorer and go to your download folder right there and then a virtual box should be here somewhere there we go that right there right um so all right so bring it back we are installing virtual box so double click on virtual box this page will come up uh click on next right click on next again make sure all these are selected right then click on next and then you know they're gonna give you the little warning about your network interface just click yes, then install. So this shouldn't take that long. It's probably not going to take that long. Uh, so let's give it a minute. Uh, when it's finished, we're gonna proceed and then continue with the next step. Now this next step is going to be about importing the programs into VirtualBox, okay? All right, so we're gonna click yes here. They're asking us, hey, you sure you wanna install VirtualBox? Um, we say yes. Let's give it a minute. Give it a minute. And here we are. It's finished. Right? So it's really straightforward to install VirtualBox. When it's finished, you should be able to search it from here. It should be one of the recently added program. If you don't see it there, it's all it's pretty much almost always. Uh, opened for you so you can right click on it and then maybe pin to the taskbar I like to do that just in case you know I don't want to keep going here and open it up all right pin it to the taskbar so you can you have you know easy access to it now this is VirtualBox this is the latest version of VirtualBox so <clears throat> what we're going to do first is to import some of the programs that we have here now, one of the thing that I did, and I highly recommend you do this, is to you know make a folder in your C drive so you can organize this a little bit better. So if I go to my C drive here, this PC, if I can click on this PC, go to my C drive. Uh, I had a folder that I created, uh, and I called this Cyber Home Lab. So you, you can right click anywhere in this white space, white space, and then click on or go to New, and then you know, create a folder that way. Uh, for, for those who doesn't know how to do that, obviously. Uh, <clears throat> or, I, and after you've created the folder, just, you know, open it up and go to your downloads folder. If I can open up downloads one more time, right? Open up your downloads folder and then just drag everything you've downloaded here. Now that's obviously after everything I've finished downloading. Right now, you know, as you can see, all these are still downloading. Uh, so I'm just moving forward. If you're watching a recording of this, you will be able to follow along after everything have finished uh, downloading. All right, now I do have everything downloaded here. And one thing that I wanna mention is that if you are on Windows 10, these files are going to be zipped. Right? You are made exploitable and your Windows or VA files are going to be zipped. What you wanna do is to click on it and extract all right click on extract extract all and you can select the location where you want to uh, extract that file 